Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I'll also be notifying the winners of the February Raspberry Pi Challenge uh, within the next 24 hours. So watch your email and respond so I'm able to ship them. For March, I'll continue the same challenge as we had in February. You either report an error that I made uh, during uh, the podcast or fill out the quick survey that we have on the podcast show notes page. DNS over HTTPS, DNS over TLS, these are two protocols that still gather a lot of interest. And Rob today focused on the second one, DNS over TLS. Not quite as popular, I think, as DNS over HTTPS, uh, because first of all, it's relatively easy to block. And secondly, it's not built into browsers as a DNS over HTTPS. But on the other hand, it's easy to install on, for example, a little router and provide anonymized uh, DNS services for a particular network. What Rob did here is uh, demonstrate some tools that help you find DNS over TLS endpoints in your network, and then also how you test and query uh, those endpoints. There is a nice tool as part of not a DNS which is an alternative uh, DNS server, KDIC, uh, that comes with a DNS over TLS uh, built-in. So you don't need anything special, any other tools in order to probe a DNS over TLS server. And well, have you ever Googled for a question that you had, uh, whether it's IT related or not? I know I probably did that at least a dozen times just today. And looks like the good loader malware, according to a write-up by Sophos, is taking advantage of that. Apparently, uh, the group behind this malware is operating around 400 compromised servers and using them for a good old black hat search engine optimization. Now, in the past, this has often been used sort of for fairly simple, popular search terms. Google has had a good handle recently on sort of the more obvious black hat search engine optimization. But in this case, they are going after a little bit of, sort of more specific results. So instead of uh, going just after the top uh, search terms as some of uh, the old tools did, in the example that Sophos shows, uh, they're going after questions that people often ask from Google, like in the example they have here, do I need a party wall agreement to sell my house? Well, uh, if you click on the link, uh, then you're presented with a page that sort of looks like it has the answer, but the actual answer is again behind a link that then downloads the malware for you. In the example they show here, it really looks kind of awkward and uh, probably uh, not very likely that someone will fall for it necessarily. But uh, if you are asking a similar question, searching for some piece of software or such, uh, then uh, you may be much more likely to fall and click and download the malware. And did you know AOL was still a thing for some people? I remember 20 years ago in my early days at SANS where much of SANS was actually run off AOL email addresses. And of course, a lot of people who sort of grew up with AOL are still maintaining their email account with AOL. And a recent phishing campaign is taking advantage of a, people still relying on AOL.com email accounts, and B, that these people are often not very technically sophisticated. So the email threatens the user with closing their AOL account if they do not respond to the phishing email, which of course will then steal their passwords. 
Have you ever wondered if some of uh, these uh, CPU exploits that uh, create a lot of headlines these last few years like Spectre were actually used in the wild? Well, we have some evidence now that they may be used in the wild. Reverse engineer Julian Voisin uh, wrote up a post uh, with a sample that Julian found on a virus total. Of course, having a sample on virus total doesn't necessarily mean that it was used in actual attack. Researchers sometimes do upload samples they create, first of all, uh, to sort of prevent those samples from causing damage and uh, giving kind of antivirus tools a heads up, but uh, also to check whether or not they are detected by current antivirus. But overall, it is interesting uh, to see code like this uh, being submitted. And it's certainly some evidence uh, that uh, this code may have been used in an actual attack. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. And as usual, if you like this podcast, tell your friends about it, post on social media or whatever forum uh, you use uh, to tell your friends about things like that, or leave a good review with whatever site you use to download this podcast from. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.